Alrighty, welcome back. We're at the bumper. Uh, I'm going to do this here in a minute. I'm just going to show you what I got going on here. What I've got is from the original bumper of the 55. The, these are the Dagmars. I think they're off the original bumper of a 55. I'm not sure if it was Canadian version or the American version, and there is a difference. Um, what these are is off the bumper, and I've cut them. You can see I put a piece in here. I welded a piece in there. Weld a piece of flat bar across there. I've welded an extension across the bottom of them to make them longer. And this is how I've done this. This is all round bar in here. This is all round stock in here. So when I put this on, throw that up in there, it makes it look like it's Frenched. So basically what it makes it look like, this piece is set inside of that. And how I done that is I outlined it in round bar and then welded it on and filled it. Uh, if you can tell, or if you can't tell, this is round bar also that runs all along the bottom of here, all along here, and all up around here. That is round bar. So that's basically what I got going on there. I'm going to end up sending these to the Cromer. I think um, Cambridge Chrome is probably where I'm going to send them to, and uh, they're going to make them look beautiful, no doubt in my mind, but I'm just going to take a DA here for a second. You can see I got some rust on them. I had them clean at one time, and they will do the job they need to do to make them look the way they need to look, I guess. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you when I put a DA on it, what it'll look like. And then I'll show you, then I will take you over, and I might even, actually Jolene has the has the computer set up to show a few pictures of this, do you not? Mm -hmm. We'll show a few pictures of this. I'm just going to sand this off and show you what it looks like. Woo, that thing's hot. This is an 80 grit. No doubt in my mind, it has to go finer. So basically that's just a quick sand off with an 80 grit. You can see what's got to go on. They got to make them nice and shiny, but I'm sure they'll do with something a lot nicer than what I've just done, but I've just buffed it off. Exact same thing and gonna put it back on again. You can see how it's just, you can see how you can make your own chrome if you want to. You just weld it together and try to do the best job you can. Do the best job you can to make it flushed off and flush it off the best you can. Sand it with the DA, sand it with whatever you can to make it feel right. And, and look nice. So that's basically what that's going to be is chrome all the way up and through there. It's going to be nutted and bolted on the back side of this round rod. That's, that's all it is. I'm, I'm going to show you how. I'm going to take you to the computer for a second and give you a little rundown on give you a little rundown on how I put the grill in the car and then you'll know and then you can see how I done it. And we haven't, we didn't do that on any of the film work at all. And the reason we didn't, because it was done. I got this car back in 2014. So it's been setting for, it's been setting for what? Six years, seven years, eight, eight years. It's been setting. It's quite hard to believe how long it's been setting. Um, but when I first got the car, I, like, I only got uh, the, the cowl back, the front end I had got from another rusty old car. You can see how I round barred it up, round barred the front, round barred the grill. Which button do I press over here? 
I'm going to push a button. We're going to go to the next step. You can see a round bar and the grill put in it. That's an 05 Dodge grill, I think. There's the piece in the front that went on the hood that started of that. Uh, there's where I got the front end welded in and to put the piece in that's just round bar on the bottom, round bar on the top, hood cut off. You can see how I welded here, round bar on the bottom. Uh, that's just metal folded down from the headlight straight down with, with the bumper held up by cans to see what it's you know, going to look like. Uh, that's the only bumper I had. Um, you flat piece of metal put in there to go over top of the bumper. You can see how it got all these pieces welded in where the, where the, the grill goes in. Uh, round bar all on this edge to make that edge on top of the bumper. So it's kind of like a little pan on top of the bumper. Obviously the grills put in with the, the metal work being done. Uh, there you see the bumper being held on by another can, obviously not continuously hung on. I'll show you how I put that on. Um, these are the, the Dagmars that I put on and started doing the work and cutting them and fitting them. You can see how the piece is out there from the bumper. You can see the piece I made for the bottom and welded that on. So just made a pattern, stuck it in there, took some, took a line, traced it, put it in there, welded it up, ground it off the best I could, and there it be, just like that. And that's how you make your own chrome stuff, and the people at the chrome place uh, must be very, very talented in their own way, because um, that does not feel perfect, it does not, but uh, I'm sure when they put the chrome on it, it will look really nice. You can see both places welded up, I put two brackets, Ooh put two brackets inside that. I put some tape around that obviously to give myself a line to what I need. Uh, there's what I started with. That's an original one off the original bumper so I had to cut them down quite a ways to make them smaller to fit in there. That's the piece that I had to put in and I had to make that come down straight. See that leaned off quite a bit. I got them coming down. Then bolt. I just showed you they bolt in faceward that way. Uh, basically just showing what the bumper looked like side two. Oh, and there's the round bar that I made that went around that piece to hold to make it look like it's French. So when I set that chrome on there, that round bar makes it look like it's French. So uh, there's a friend of mine, his name's uh, Danny. Uh, he has a car called is it Sheer Passion. Yeah. It's called Sheer Passion, the car is, and it's from California. And the first thing that amazed me about that car when I first saw it was how the, the stainless down the side of the door was French. And I was thinking, wow, what a lot of work that would be to cut that door and, and set that inside and do that. But no, um, I'm thinking that they took round rod and outlined the stainless and then filled it out to make it look like the stainless um, was Frenched inside the car. So if I took a piece of round rod, you had a piece of stainless running down the side of your car I'm not sure how it runs on that car right now. It's running down the side of your car, and you had your stainless on there, and you put a piece of round rod on either side of it and, and outlined it, and you welded that all on there. When you filled that out, that piece of stainless that you put on there would look French. It looks like it's inside the car. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's what they did. So you can see the round place where I put it on, or the, what you call them Dagmars, I guess. Now you can see where I've welded it all up and ground it out the best I can, and I still got another piece to put down the bottom here on here, to make it so it's Frenched all the way. Uh, that's showing how it looks, how it looks in, set inside. Just showing you the metal work that was done on the front of the car, that's all. Uh, there's Fina Bina, huh? There's Fina. So you can see I put the piece on the bottom that holds it so it makes it look at French. So we gotta set it down inside, then push it back in. And that shows with some primer on it. And uh, that was probably the last day that I ever worked on it <laughs> until now it's probably the last day I'm going to show you how I put the bumper on it just a few more pictures with them both done uh, you can just a little more work there on the door part I just I closed in a couple places on the door there's the seams that I fiberglass and filled anyways we'll take off from that um, Jolene will set We'll tell you, put a link there. Um, there's, it's on the Facebook page and it's under albums. If you go under albums, you can see the, the work that I did to it, the year that I got it, um, basically. 
and it shows, you know, it shows the round rod that I put around this. And basically what I'm saying is if, if I was going to do the stainless on the side of this car, if I put a piece of round rod on this side, a piece of round rod on this side, made it come to a point where the stainless come, and then I filled this out. The stainless on this car would look like it's Frenched, and it's a very cool trick. If you come over here uh, on this car, you can, I'll show you. Um, this right here, right there, this car sat outside for a while. I did a little bit, a bunch of work to it and threw it outside. And as I did that, that's what it looked like. And there's a, that's a bolt right there. That comes through down here, and that's where my bumper bolts on. It bolts on here, down here in the corner, I've walled a nut on top of this piece right here. There's a nut down here. See that nut right there? <laughs> nut right there. We have one in the center that holds the bumper up. We have one over here and one over in the corner over here. So that sucks that bumper up and nice and tight to that front end. It has nothing that goes to the chassis of the car. It has nothing to go to that. Uh, many bumpers just bolt to the back of the car like a, like a Mustang. You know, if you're thinking, well, it's got to have the support there. Well, no, it doesn't because a Mustang um, just has two little brackets and they bolt to the back part of the trunk of the car. I'm sure there's many cars that do not bolt right exactly to the frame. But this does not, and I'm not looking to smash it up. I'm looking to just put the bumper on. Uh, this bumper is off a 1960 Chrysler. And what I'm looking to do is, um, is I'm looking to take this seam out of it all on there. Looking to take that seam all out. I'm like, I'm taking a look and take this seam all out on this side. And basically how I'm going to do that is I'm going to weld it up. I'm going to weld this all up. Uh, the rust here, I think they're going to deal with. I have a crack here to deal with. And uh, I'm going to take these two bolts out. There's a couple holes that someone drilled in it. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grind it, weld it up the best I can. There's a couple holes on the top here. You can see, if you come take a look. I, I welded the ends down here. I, I think if you remember that, I welded two ends in it so it does not look, uh, it looks complete when it's on the front end. Here's the tabs that are welded for the, on the bumper to hold. There's the tabs there that are welded on the bumper to hold. This center hole here, you can see how the, it peaks here. The center hole is the center bolt that goes here. This hole has to be covered. This hole has to be covered. There's another uh, bracket here that I've welded on, and then there's another bracket here I've welded on to bolt it to the car. There's the other piece that I welded on the bumper for this end to fill it in, and basically what I want to do is, is, is finish the rest. So basically what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to uh, take, the, take, a, take a ram rod or a coat hanger, and I'm going to fill that in, and I'm going to grind it off. So it looks like this, you know, I mean, you can't tell that that's been welded after I sanded it. There's a few dig marks in it. Yes, there is from the grinder. It can be sanded down more, obviously, but you cannot see where it's welded across there. And that's basically what I got to do with that. And the way I'm going to do that is, is putting more product on than I need. That's the only way that I'm going to be able to get that crack filled and get it leveled off and get it ground off, get it feather wheeled, get it 80 grit. You can run it right down to 220 grit to what I'm not sure what grit would be needed to make this look like it should. And I'm hoping they're going to do a beautiful job for me or make me look good. How's that? So if you want to make something or make a piece of chrome for your car, you basically have to weld it up um, a little better than, than you would do your body panels. You really you have to weld it up a little bit better because you're not wanting um, you're not wanting to see where you've welded it on these Dagmars. This is I haven't done anything to this side, and you can you can feel stuff in that, but where that's round and that's going to be chromed, you don't really see anything in that. You know, it's kind of a uh, what can I say an illu illusion because it's round. It's hard to tell if it's wavy. You know, no one's going to be down at the front of the bumper going. You know, basically. And if they do, you know what to do when they bend over and start doing this? <laughs> Give them one of those. But anyways, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to try to get that cleaned up. Uh, the, the, grill, the grill on this car is walking through a junkyard. It was at Whitney Levy's uh, junkyard. I was walking through the junkyard. There was a van there, and I seen the grill in the van, and I liked it. He said, take it. So you know what I did? I took it. Um, that's what happened. That grill there is not a bad looking grill. It's a good looking grill actually. 
Really good looking grill. It's got no emblem in, emblems in it. I think Dodge truck has an emblem in it. Uh, did not have that on the van. Jolene bought me a brand new one. $230? I think so. A brand new one. She bought me a brand new grill like this for $230. Now, you think about um, getting yourself a bumper chromed and having a grill chromed for your car. You're, you're not going to get something for $230. It's just, it's just not going to happen for you. So that's why I jumped on that. Uh, the Dagmars, the round pieces, the, I guess they're called Dagmars, the, the brazier looking thing that comes out of the front of the car. The reason I got, I got to them things, when I, when I squared the front of the car off because the headlight leaned back, I sort of wanted this to lean back with it. And when I flattened it off, there was nothing there. So that's when I come up with the idea of the round rod and the Dagmars to bolt on the front of it to give it that more of a bumper look. I think that the Dagmars might even be out farther than the bumper. And that's okay by me. Uh, I'm not planning on hitting anything with it anyways. But uh, let's, let's, weld up, let's weld up a seam and uh, we'll take a look at it and see what it goes like. And I'll show you how I do it. There's no special way, I guess, other than I need more product than it needs. Because I, I don't want to weld it in the seam and then try to dig it out with the grinder and say, I can't see the weld no more. I don't want that. Nope. I want to be able to buff it off flat and not have anything. So that means I'm going to have to, the highest part of the bumper, I'm going to have to build up the other side, that part of the bumper, enough high enough that I can run it off smooth. I'm going to turn on some air because I'm not planning on warping anything. Excuse me, sweetheart. Jolene looks amazing today. I think Jolene's going to take me out to supper. Are you not, sweetheart? Yep. She's going to take me out to supper. God bless her. We're doing good on the on the alcohol situation. Um, we had the end of the month. Um, we've grabbed yourself a bottle of wine, a case of beer. Uh, we took, I think it was two days. Yeah. Two days and it was gone. But we've decided that we do not have to run and get a bottle of wine every other day or a case of beer every day. We do not need that. We've kind of come to a situation where I, I, I don't feel like holding beer all the time and holding wine all the time it is a depressant and uh, if you you know if you drink it you you must feel the depressant side of it sometimes if you drink too much and sometimes it's not where i want to be in the brain sometimes it makes you do that because that's what it is but what i'm saying is is i think that we've come to reality that we do not need do not need uh go ahead. Put the welder on. Got my clickers on. Got my clickers on. So there's, there's, what can I say? There's, when you're customizing something or you're building something, um, there's all kinds of ways to do something. Yes, there is. We, we, we have to realize that. There's more than one way to skin a cat. And the reason I say that, because you, like you can start at his toes, or you can start at his fingers, or you can start at his head, or you know what I mean? There's more than one, one way to skin a cat, and that's what I mean by that. There is more than one way. Um, but when it comes to something like this and fitting a bumper on a car, um, I have bolted it on the car, you know, in a fashion where I was able to make this stuff fit tight when the bumper was on. It was... Too, it was so hard to try to make the bumper fit really tight to everything by putting it on the frame and then going that way. I didn't have any brackets. So when I made this stuff and I, you know, got it on there, I, I figured out welding the bolts on this and then tightening the bumper to this, it really made it fit, made it fit really nice. Also, the bumper that you see there is the bumper that I had. I had a car with that bumper on it. I took it off. I did some customizing to it. The car is called the Bat Out of Hell. It's white. It's a 60 Chrysler. I put big fins on it. And I cut the roof in half and shortened it. I put two van windows in the back for the windows. I put two van side door windows. Got them at uh, Whitney's Junkyard also. Put them in the, it's, it's got a split window in the back. Um, I used some bad chad flexible chrome and did a, did a molding over the roof like a 56 Ford at Crown Victoria. It's got a 440 in it with two cross, with the cross ram, 
with the two four barrels on it. Uh, in its day, in its day, it was quite a car. And it still is. It's just, um, just haven't run it for quite a long time now because just time has taken over and uh, it's been sitting for a while and I haven't done anything with it. It kind of went downhill because I run her quite hard. I run her in the, all the weather and I run it with slamming the doors and I run it. I used it. But uh, this is the bumper off that car. I did not throw it away. I used it. Alrighty. And we're on air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my fancy trick and we're going to do a little bit of welding here and we're going to make the bumper with no, no seams in it. And I'm just going to grab the welding rods. I have to thank the person that bought the welding rods because uh, it's a nice gesture and uh, I use them. The coat hangers, Malcolm bought me, I use them too. It's just that these are a little better welding sometimes and uh, I use them. I'm going to get the thicker ones. The only reason I want the thicker ones is because I want more metal. Uh, the thinner ones, if I was welding a pat, it all depends on the gap that you have, what you're doing. I got the air to cool it off in case I get too much heat going on. Um, let's get a little scene going. As I got going across here, I'm just going to feel it. You know, I'm going to feel it as I go. That way there I know where to put my excess metal. I'm going to use some air on that. Don't want to warp anything up or get things going crazy. This is going to take some time, but that's what it's about, having fun, taking time doing something. What I'm going to do right at the present moment, I'm going to tack it all together so it's not going to take off anywhere. I'm just going to tack it together so it's not going to take off. Let's face it, it's a, it, it's a piece of metal. It can take off just like any other piece of metal. I hate to have it all twisted up when it goes back on the car. Now, when I go get this chrome, it's not going to be three pieces. It's going to be one. And uh, I'm not sure if that makes it better or worse. But for me, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to look better. I think it's going to look better. You can see here, you can see how that part is higher than that part. That part is higher than that part. So I'm going to have to put more on one side than the other. Just going to knock that off. going to allow me to feather that off, that's all. And all this is, is to make it look different. Smoothing it up. It does not matter how the weld looks right at the present moment. It does not. You can see, if you want to come over here, sweetheart, and come on this side if you want. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end up putting a little bit more weld right in there. 
because it's not feathered down nice down here it's a little bit nicer and I think I'll be able to grind that off nice and get that come together but right there I would not so I'm gonna to have to put a little more weld down in there and I'm not looking for penetration or anything like that I'm looking for to fill in what's going on and to feather it off to so when it's so when it's chromed it looks good There's no way that you're just going to fill in the seam and grind it off and make it look good. Sir, with us, we here. I shouldn't say no way, but. And the rod is just for material. That's all the rod's for is material. When I grind that off, I'm going to try to flapper wheel it so it's flat. I'm not going to dig at it. It's almost like using a DA for sand and filler. If I take the DA and sand the filler, if I take the DA and keep it flat, keep it going around in circles and hold it flat, that's fine. As soon as I start doing this, then I start making the, the panels wavy. Um, if I hold my DA flat, like I would hold a block, then you can have something flat. But I start taking the grinder and digging at it and trying to make it, trying to flush, trying to dig out the well to feather it off. Well, then that's not the where I want to be. I want to be so I can flapper wheel it off flat so it is flat. So they'll be a lot happier. Not many people will notice the bumper, but I will. running more material on this side because it's lower than that side. So we pack it together so nothing takes off. come over here and see though. When I take this piece, laid flat, not bad. So basically, when you look down through there, so when you look, to, can you look down through the holes where the rod's sitting? Mm -hmm. You can see that there's area right here that needs material. When I hold that down flat, there's area on that side that needs material. So that's where I'm going to put my material in here. That's what I'm looking for. The bumper is not in the greatest shape. No, it's not. But I'll put in the time and the effort, send it away, and we should be fine. I've only ever had one bumper sent away in chrome. One bumper. I've only ever, all the cars that I've ever done, 
I've only had one bumper ever sent away. The, all the other bumpers I made with Bay had flexible chrome, or I just not, did not get them done. I painted them, or I done something else with them. But as you get a bumper done like this, or something like this, it really is, in my mind, a quite a valuable piece when you send it away and get it done. It just costs lots of money, and it's not something that I do every day, not at all. I shouldn't say that. I've had two bumpers done. Sorry, excuse me. Two bumpers. We had the Cadillac done, and I did the 60 Chrysler. On the back of the 60 Chrysler, the bumper, the car that had this bumper on the front, I smoothened the one off in the back and made it all one piece, welded it all, and it turned out nice. the other side trying to keep the you know it's it's warm don't get me wrong it's warm it's just I'm trying to trying to keep the heat down a little bit thinking I should have kept it on the car, but I did not. And then this is also where you learn, or I don't say where you learn, but as you want to butt weld something and, and, and get it really nice and grind it off so it's flat and smooth and you can't tell, I will have to come back in here and weld up a couple more times because there will be pinholes, there will be pockets, there will be certain things that I don't like. And what happens is you grind it off and then you weld it up again. And that's basically what's going to go on here. We'll get this little bit done, get it ground off, and then we'll call her. I won't hold you too long. Hopefully I get a flapper wheel hoping. And the reason I'm going through this is because this is the bumper that I have. 
basically this is the bumper that I have shrink it too much I get that cool air believe it or not me hitting that with the cool air it does shrink it it does Ooh, nice kiss Gonna go the other side trying to keep the heat placed around a little bit that's all I'm trying to do keep it placed around a little bit Give them some material, so I think I can get it grinded off without having anything going on there, any low spots. imagine how much this bumper would cost you 
if he was paying. I know, I know I got that little seam welded up there, but I got all on down there to do, that to do, that one over there to do. There's a crack over there I got to fix. Then I got to grind it off. I got to make it look right. Then you got to send to get a call. How much is this bumper worth? I'm going to finish this down here. I may as well. I may as well. And then I can say I got it. Spot a well come off there? Looks like it popped off. That's one thing I hope I'm not doing is twisting the bumper all up. Ugh, that don't make me feel good. And it could be happening. It could be happening. keeping it at the right temperature with the air hose is what I'm hoping. I got the air turn or the gas turned all the way on. We shut it all the way off. I'm gonna do a little bit of flapper wheel now, and then we'll show you what it's gonna, what we're gonna look like, and what we have to fix, and what we don't have to fix. Basically, and what it takes. Nope, it's good. It's good. I think the air kept it retracted it nice. We've got a half used uh, flapper wheel there. It's probably not the best. I'll do the best I can to show you what I want it to look like. And uh, we'll, get a, we'll get a new one. This is going to take some time to finish it. Yes, it will. Where's our little ear things at? Oh, yeah. You know where they're at? Mm -hmm. Jolene knows where at. Jolene cleaned up the, the 
cabinets yesterday. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Look at that. Got her own little earplug here and here and here. Ready? Yep. Got earplugs on? You want some? It's okay. That doesn't bother me. What's that? That one doesn't bother me. It's okay. Start to hit on that side a little bit, that's okay. I've got some metal on the bumper that I'm allowed to grind also. Getting close to the Basically what I'm looking for Got it flattened off there. I got a couple spots there. I got to just keep going there a little bit. Keep holding it flat. It's hot there right now. I think I need a little bit more. That little pocket there, I need a little bit more there. So I'll hit that with the welders, put a little spot on it. And that's what I have to do the whole bumper. Come through this side. Basically what I'm gonna be doing is that there, the whole, the whole way. Trying to make it look like that. That'll just take time, a little bit of grind. I got to put a little bit more weld right there. You can see how that's feathered off nice. I got to probably, there's, this is probably an eighth thick, so I got some grinding I can do on this, but I got to make sure that I hold it feathered out so you cannot see. I don't want to start dipping it in there. I want to hold it flat. Not sure if you want to hold. Would be nice to have a new flapper wheel.
see I'm going to need a spot going on there. You can see I just keep grinding it off. And it'd be nice to have a nice flapper wheel where it's flat instead of having it angled off like this. Gonna have to do the whole thing that way. It's warm. And that's what I'll do the whole thing. I'll have to go back over to some places with the welder, obviously. But basically what I want to do is I want to be able to hold that flat the best I can. Let's get real. Best I can. It's not bad. Right? Now I'm thinking that there's a, this is a three a three way process. I'm thinking um, I'm thinking there's a copper that goes on this in the middle process. I'm thinking, and I'm thinking where the copper would be on there. That's where they, the the soft material. That's where if it had any problems or any issues, that's where they would use a. I'm, I'm guessing. I don't know for sure. I'm guessing they would use a block or something. Maybe. I've also seen lead applied on a bumper if it was not exactly right they did a little bit of lead over top of the copper and uh, they leaded it out and smoothed it off a little bit but what I'll do is I'll get that looking the best I can you see that pretty pretty it's high right there actually take it down a little bit more get it looking the best I can all the way down there with the grinder all the way down there with the grinder I have to have more material on than I need to make it look like that I got a little spot of weld I got to put in there I got to try to make sure that this line is there and round it off nice. Um, I still need to put a spot of weld in there to fix that. Maybe a spot there, just a little spot. And then we could round that off and shape that with our grinder. And basically we'll do the whole thing that way. And uh, we'll have a one piece bumper. How many pieces are your bumper? And I'll say one piece. And the reason I say that because this will not come off and that will not come off. So it's not three pieces, it's one. And I, I don't think anybody really is going to recognize I don't think anybody would recognize that it is a three-piece bumper, but you will know because you watched me weld it up, and uh, that's what I'm doing. Good bumper. Alrighty, let's give away a hat or a shirt, and you can also go on the page. There's there's albums on there from many many years ago that um, that I done things and took pictures. Uh, like obviously, uh, Elvis was started in 2014. I did a Mm, there's there's not like there's a few albums on there let's face it there's a lot of cars that I've done I never got a picture of never even had an inkling of showing any of the work when I first started I didn't want to show any bad pictures of any car it's kind of weird that I did not want to show I did not want to show how bad a shape a car was but in the end how do you show what you're capable of doing if you do not show any of the work that you're starting with so um, I, I got over it and uh, I started showing some of the stuff that I was doing and some of the stuff that um, I had done These are all the albums. there's all the albums there and there's the bat of the hell right there Bring this car up, will you please? And that's yeah, the two two cross ram, two four burls. That's the bed of the hell. That's the engine that's in it. But anyways, if we go back, um, this car right here was uh, this is this was my winter car when I was a younger man. I made I took a fury and made it into a, a super bird, and. Uh, <laughs> That's the front end I welded on it. That's sandblasted. That's not filled. That's sandblasted because there's fiberglass right there. If you go through that right to the end, maybe there, might, there it is there. Um, this was built out of, I built the wing out of two by six and went right down to the trunk, just like a real super bird. <laughs> and uh, I used to drive that thing around. I drove it for three winters and uh, I, I sold it. And there's a man in Halifax that owns it. Uh, he, I think he's he still running it with the original paint on it. I used it a bucket of paint. I painted with a bucket of paint that was um, that was a freebie at Napa, and I ran it three winters. And I can remember um, 
when I remember I pulled into the service station one day, and, and an old guy came out and he said, "Son, he said, you know what kind of car you're driving?" And I said, "Oh yeah, I said, it's just an old car." He said, "Wow, it's more than an old car. I just want to let you know." So anyway, it was quite funny that. Um, he thought it was a Superbird. I, I covered the headlights over. I finished the headlights over. It, and I even made the cones for the top of the fenders. In the end, it looked better and better all the time. But uh, that's the old Superbird. Um, I had a friend. Uh, I still have a friend. Chris Boyd used to call it the shopping cart. He said, when I got behind you, he said, you look like you were driving a shopping cart with a big wing on the top. Uh, but anyways, let's give away a hat or shirt. There's, an al there's albums there if you want to go through them and take a look at them. They're, they're pretty, pretty cool to browse. And there's so many cars that I never took pictures of just because, you know, you didn't think of it at that time, you know. Um, you, you got the old car in, you did the work to it, you give it back to the customer, and that's the way it went. James R. Epstein. James R. Epstein, you win a hat or a shirt of your choice because you've taken the time to write in a comment and re and remember the more comments you write in the, the more chances you have a chance to win pretty simple chad your dialogue on lying is spot on i recently experienced this and you were absolutely correct thank you thank you james um yeah there's a lot less to remember isn't there <laughs> basically this is what I, this is how I, I find it i find it so easy to do this I don't say finding it so easy. Let's face it, content's content, but it's easy for me to explain what's going on through my brain because I'm always, I'm, I'm used to saying what's on my mind or my brain and, and I'm not fabricating anything like I'm fabricating the bumper. I'm used to doing that because I'm always t saying what's, how I feel. And once you practice that and practice that and practice that, I'm able to tell you, go through step by step of everything that I'm doing and what I'm thinking and why I'm doing it, because that's, that's what I do. And uh, thank you for noticing it, James. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.